Lucy Marion Roberts, she was a child of God and she just led a life of making people feel good. And that you can't you can't teach somebody how to do that. That's just who she was. Lucy Mary and Tolliver Roberts, you just say her name and I just light up. I light up and I also want to cry. Woo! <laughs> Mama. Mm. That woman was a force of nature. I saw her behind the curtain. I saw her off the stage. She lived a life of of service. She was an epitome to me of being a Christian woman. My mother always saw the best in people. She, I wouldn't say she was a blind optimist, but I'm sure she was always looking for the best in people. Well, this is what I, there are many reasons why I love my mother and my father, but just thinking of them at Howard University back in the day. My mother used to talk about she went to Howard to and majored in finding a man, uh, finding a husband, I think that's how she put it. My father was doing slightly better financially than my mom and my mom's dorm was right next to the cafeteria. She saw him in line in the cafeteria from her dormitory room, and she said, oh, he looks handsome. She would leave her dorm room, just happen to run into him. She said, hi, I'm Lucy Marion. And he said, I'm Lawrence, how are you? He was such a gentleman that he would pay for her meal as well. Daddy never had a chance. You never had a chance, did you, Daddy? I believe they were soulmates. I really believe they were soulmates. My mother's life as a military wife I think was very, very challenging for her. I cannot imagine picking up and moving your children. I think it's documented 20 something times in the span of that 30 years. Well, my mother was a, was a homemaker. Everywhere we went, every four years, two years, four, within a week or two, we had a, we had a home set up. We had home, we had home, we had structure, we had meals, we had a loving family. And also every four years or so, we had a new, a new member of the household. We're all four years apart. And so my mother managed to meld all this together and, and, and keep us all focused in the right direction. They were a life force together. And I really appreciated, appreciated how when dad was in the military, it was all about daddy. You know, mama, she would you know, sometimes be a part-time teacher, PTA, uh, so little real estate. She was primarily you know, there for the kids. And then when my dad retired, it was almost like she said, it's my turn. And you know what? My dad said, you're right. And so it was my dad that was following her on the board here, at Mississippi Power, traveling, uh, Federal Reserve, uh, Coliseum, it goes on and on and on, and a lot of church business with the Presbyterian Church. She traveled widely with them um, to help people in underdeveloped nations. She really, really had a, a, a feeling for education, the importance of education. On the State Education Board, she was the first chairman of that. It was a nine-year term. But she really felt like you know, with education, all things are possible. My mother knew what it means to change the trajectory of someone's life because her life had been changed by people who cared. Every single board that she was on, she was not there to fill a quota. She was not there just so it would look good on her resume. She wanted to have a voice for those who didn't have a voice. Everything um, that she could, could fit into her schedule, she, she did. I remember her <laughs> going on The View with me to talk about her book. This is my story, this is my song, is a, is a book that I've gone back to from time to time since uh, she passed in 2012. And she was able to think back of the things that she's uh, been involved with, and uh, I think that was more of a reflection of, of a lifetime, I think, more than anything else. I think there are so many people who kept saying, you've got stories in you. My mother was a wonderful storyteller. And now my mother's grandchildren, uh, who never had a chance to meet her, great-grandchildren and all the greats to come will be able to hear her testimony. And of course you can see throughout there how important music was. It was mentioned several times, uh, you know, that the uh, inspiring things that transpired around her singing. Music was very, very important to her. I remember my mom would sit at the piano and play hymns and sing, and her voice was so beautiful, we just carried throughout the house. During the Depression, I know she told, uh, she told me a story of, uh, you know, when their lights were turned off at her home. And uh, they, were, they were there in candlelight in the basement. 
And uh, she was just singing, and her father was just despondent, unhappy, if you will, morose. And she just wanted to cheer the family up, and uh, he, he dismissed her. And she went outside, went around to the window, which was there, their basement, and was singing through the window to cheer the family up. So, uh, she, you know, she has always had that vibrant spirit, which carried forward. Everywhere we went, all these assignments we had, she was always found a church, you found a choir. She was involved with the choir, maybe singing, maybe singing and playing for the choir in all these locations uh, you know, around the world. She wanted everyone to realize that you know, what we're doing here, whether it's for the children or the community, it is an offering to God. And we need to remember that we are doing something that is for Him first and foremost. Mom always put God first. And, and I remember she said, I am a child of God. I am a child of God. I have washed my robes in the crimson fountain. I am a child of God. I miss mom. <laughs>